Captain Action jumps and bolts out his parachute. Pew, pew! Take that, Dr. Dredd. Hey, Dad, do you ever parachute on your job? Huh? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, you would be too scared to parachute off a building, Dad. Leave your dad alone, honey. You don't need to parachute when you sell houses. Boring. When I grow old, I want a job where you have to parachute. What? Oh, crap! When watching the OTK Gaming Expo that happened in early June, quite a few different games stood out. One of these games being the game Figment 2 Creed Valley. It had such a unique art style and character direction that it piqued my interest. Never even playing Figment 1, I had to jump into its crazy world that was presented. And oh boy, it was well worth it. Before going into any sort of depth of the game, I will highly recommend playing it. Figment by Bedtime Digital Games is a cute indie game that is described by the developers as a musical action adventure set in the recesses of the human mind. I would throw in there too that it has puzzle elements, but nothing as mind-numbing as Mist or The Witness. So, like I said, for please give this game a try it is a good game and it'll give you about five hours of entertainment give or take now let's get into the meat of this video i'm going to be breaking this video and review into a few sections presentation gameplay and story warning spoilers ahead Presentation can be divided into four subcategories graphics, soundtrack, dialogue, and how each one comes together to form the world presented. Let's head into the first area graphics. The graphics are truly stunning, though it's no AAA title. It is something like out of a painting, and that's exactly what the CEO, Klaus Peterson, thought to achieve in developing this game. In a 2018 interview, Klaus discussed how the artwork was inspired by their previous title, Back to Bed, and its surrealist imagery. From the feedback received in the previous game, they delved further into the surrealist imagery, giving us what we see now with Figment. To boost the surrealism, every single piece shown on the screen is hand-drawn, which gives a visual flair. This leads to a world that is quite vibrant and matching the graphical themes with both the creative side and the logical sides of the brain being present. Both of these sides, among other zones in the game, really creates a unique world and something that's different from many games out there currently. This vibrant nature too was on purpose. As discussed in an interview with Niels Sorensen, game designer and musician with Bedtime Digital Games. The playful nature at the start helps to disguise some of the heavier themes presented throughout the story, as it starts off relatively dark. And this joyful part is also how their company is as a whole, as set by Niels. When you have such a solid graphical choice, then you bring in the vibrancy with the soundtrack, it can really seal the deal for presentation which moves on to the next section of the soundtrack. Whenever you're listening to it throughout the game, it manages to make the presentation truly great, and enhances the imagery presented and also bleeds into the dialogue itself. As Klaus pointed out, Figment is both a game and a musical in its own right. That statement definitely holds true with numerous musical numbers being played, and each being great in their own right. Yeah, I've got a vaccine! 
need budgets like you Full of autism, nosh and blue I call the shots and you call it sick I squeeze the syringe till it goes click Your skin gets pale and your fever rise A smell of death, a swarm of flies These musical numbers are highlighted with boss battles and even with Mayor Relic, a personal favorite of mine, really giving a fun vibe to an otherwise simplistic and mechanical game. Yet, the boss battles are not the only musical moments as in between the boss locations, the world is filled with music that fits each thematic zone. which fits what the developers wanted, as they were striving for a dynamic music and interactive music experience that really all fits together into a cohesive unit. Two side points on the soundtrack as well. The first is how Dusty can interact with the world. This helps add a musical twist, albeit for a brief moment. It makes you feel as you're the embodiment of courage and that you can truly impact the mind. As for the second point, in a less story focused sense, the main menu has a lot of cool features as well. For example, when you're playing around in the audio settings, each volume slide has a sound to accompany it. Check, 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 testing, testing. Also, when you go to exit the game, it sounds as if the world is coming apart. These small additions really show that there is love put into this game and there's a bunch of nifty little things scattered throughout. Where the love is really shown, however, is in the dialogue. While this was intended to be a musical, there are moments of truly good dialogue. For example, Mayor Relic is one of my favorite characters since he says everything in a rhyme, it's cute, funny, and a little bit witty as well. While it's not busting out in a musical type deal, much like the villains, his dialogue adds to the charm of the town and the world. Mayor Relic, are you okay? A touching reunion. We've got the plague's mask. What do we do now? To fix what's broken and change the flow, into the gate the mask must go. Yet, there are moments of, well, cringe as well. Near the end of the story, there is an outright explanation of what is happening that is not completely necessary. This point will be explained more in the story department. I just bring it up now as, even though the dialogue has some great moments, there is some poorly done moments as well. One final issue for the dialogue, and this is more of a nitpick than anything else, is in the form of how jokes did not land. There is humor sprinkled throughout, especially with how Dusty and Piper interact with each other. A lot of the dialogue between the two and the evolution of Dusty felt natural for the most part. It was great to see Dusty's journey. Yet some of the jokes did fall flat between each other, which was a disappointment. I'll go again in further detail in a later section, but this is something to keep in mind. Otherwise, these elements come together to give a great presentation. With the surrealist imagery and the consistent musical nature that's scattered throughout, Figment is a game that I fell in love with. If there were all these things to the game, and that was it, it would be a near perfect game. Sadly, this is not the case, as the gameplay has some, if not quite a bit, faults to it. The gameplay is a mixed bag. 
While there are some good elements, such as the puzzle sections, there are some stinkers as well. The two stinkers being the action and the lack of replayability as a whole. So let's divide it by talking about the bad, then the good, and end it on the bad. So let's go to the first bad, which is in the form of the action. You have a roll, a basic attack, a power attack, and that's about it for what you can do. For the world's actions, you have some objects to dodge and enemies to fight. The enemies have some complexity, such as spiders that can spit out webs, and you must hit them after putting them into a vulnerable state. Or tentacles that slam down on you after some given time with a precursor telling you where they will slam. In total, there's roughly about three common enemies with some variations to each one of them. It's fine given the length of the game, which again is between three to five hours, but the issue that comes is it provides no challenge. Now, throughout the game, I died probably about three times, maybe four. Twice due to zoning out due to incoming projectiles near the end of the game. And the final time I died, maybe at two times, came at the final boss. Otherwise, I never felt any challenge in the game, and that's because of the basic gameplay presented. Even in terms of boss fights, while the presentation was spectacular for them, there was no struggle for two out of the three. Again, the last boss I did die once, but that was more due to arrogance and not focusing. While they were not difficult, it was still an enjoyable experience fighting each one of the bosses, again due to that presentation element. Nothing too difficult on the scale of the Dark Souls boss, or I would have to bash my head against the desk out of rage, but rather it was more like a Disney attraction where I enjoyed the experience, even if the experience leading up to it got a bit dull. Still, even with these complaints, fair play for the length of the game, the action was serviceable. Another means the game developed to keep the game fresh was in terms of scaling difficulty, which was one of the good elements. This part was really well done. The tutorial zone and the creative region are great progression in difficulty, with it all culminating into the final act and upping up the difficulty consistently throughout. It helped keep the gameplay bearable as newer mechanics increasing of mechanics kept you expecting more and kept you on your toes. However, if Figment 2 were to drag the game length to 10 hours, this would not work without some innovations presented. Really though, the only challenge I had came from the only good part of the gameplay section, which was, again, the puzzles. That's not to say the puzzles are incredibly difficult. They are not, but it did take a little bit of thinking. Well, Sometimes a bit more than that for myself. They were nice brain teases and freshened up the experience of the game between the combat sections. For types of puzzles, you do have a variety such as mechanical puzzles and even memory puzzles, with a bunch of other variety as well. The puzzles by themselves were not good enough to save the gameplay entirely, however, actually it hinders the final issue, which is replayability. For replayability, this is not a necessity for all games. Sometimes you can have an amazing experience that leaves your emotions in a tangle. Take Spec Ops The Line, for example. A truly breathtaking game that does not need a replay is worth every single penny. Spec Ops also uses this gameplay to drive a point across, while it's less so for Figment. There's more value in a game like Spec Ops in that regard, but it's also a game that has a lot more money thrown into it. Figment gives the player zero reason to come back again, or damn near close. 
While the puzzles are good, you already know how to solve them. The combat is less than stellar, especially with a second or third playthrough. While the visuals and soundtrack are great, it's simply not enough. Thus, it leans on the story. Which, while the story is pretty damn good, it's not good enough to desire a replay. The one form of incentive to play again would be come in getting all the memory fragments, but these are all possible to get in the first playthrough and they're not really that hard to find. There are also a few cool easter eggs scattered throughout, but again, not enough for a replay. And this leads to the final section, the story. And in regards to the story, this is where spoilers will be full blown. I do believe that the story is the best part, or second to the best part, alongside the presentation for this game, and you truly should play the game for the story in itself. So, Figment is a tightly knit story where, at the start, a family gets into a car crash. From there, it delves into the human mind. As described in the interview with Niels, it's about a father being stuck in a coma and overcoming his fears to break out of that coma. The player takes on the role of Dusty, who is a childlike courage that used to be the lead in the mind, but he slowly got shut away. As seen throughout various dialogue references and even throughout various memory fragments, Dusty is, well, becoming Dusty. He has been retired from duty and has seemingly accepted his life as retired. As you go through the subconscious of the mind, you explore both sides of the brain and realize that everything is going crazy. For the creative side, it's being stunk up and all the creative members are locked away in their houses, not being used. This could be due to the coma, or it can also be due to aging as the father who is in the coma locked away the creative side just like he locked away Dusty. On the logic side, everything becomes a lot more linear without much room to budge. So many straight lines. Since I was here last, the mind sure became a lot more organized. And boring. This is clearly a mind of a full-blown adult, again the father who is simplifying processes and losing his creative touch. Near the end of the act, you head towards the conscious mind and find imagery of both despair and eventual car crashes. This despair can be in the form of bills piling up, books, and other things as well. His mind is consumed with what has happened and the trauma of the event consumes him as a whole. Which makes sense, being in a car crash is a traumatic event, especially with your family involved. It ends with Dusty beating all the nightmares and speaking into a phone, which is a phone to the consciousness, which lets him talk the man, the father, out of the coma. This causes the man to wake up where his daughter and wife are waiting for him. My sole dislike in the story is the blatant exposition at the end. Throughout the story, it did a great job of showing instead of telling. Take Dusty, for example, where he was obviously on a vacation or even retired. As he's trying to get his martini, you can tell that he is overweight and has a relaxed attitude. He is even out of breath trying to chase the nightmare at the start of the game. The developers did such a fantastic job, especially before the climax at the end, where Dusty is starting to shrink under the responsibilities. Everything looks hopeless. The whole consciousness is becoming a mess, and then... Okay, I've had enough of this sad tune! We get it. Everything dissolves in time, but things still count while we're alive. Let's face our fears, live till we die, so we can go out with a smile. Let's make this count while we're alive. <sighs> Piper gives an over-the-top speech, or, well, song, to feel good about yourself and to never give up. 
it did not feel organic. Sure, this was a great message and something that everyone needs to keep in mind. And sure, throughout she keeps a very positive mood, but even Dusty admits after Piper's singing, he never knew she could sing. I didn't know you could sing, Piper. Well, <laughs> you were losing it, buddy. I had to do something. It seems very Deus Ex Machina to a degree, just to help find a solution for a natural problem. That is to say, it cheapened the experience overall. But through this bad, the story ends on a high note, and maybe I'm a bit of a sentimental person, but it got me to tear up a little bit. It was really heartfelt to see the father get back with his family, his daughter and wife as a whole. Besides that big issue though, this was an otherwise flawless story. Now, the way that the characters interact throughout the story and the world in itself is really great. As stated earlier, Dusty is the embodiment of childlike courage. He is where most of the human comes from as well, and his transformation from reluctance to acceptance is truly great. It really shows that taking up the mantle of courage is something that takes time and effort instead of being immediate. Dusty originally was a selfish person who wanted to just indulge in his own actions, but ended up saving everyone and going beyond the call of duty, helping get the father out of his coma. That's a great story and was really well executed. In terms of Piper, she's a bit of a... You do remember I'm called Piper, right? Whatever Turkey did. But her positivity is a nice contrast to Dusty at the start, giving a good dynamic between the two that seems real. Even with the fault near the end of the game, she is a fine character with a few decent moments. Ah, Brita Miles! Isn't it great to be back in the creative part of the mind? Nah. Jeez, cheer up, big guy. After that, the characters really start to thin up. Sure, you have Mayor Relic, who is a standout of mine. He is the MC of the land, dishing out rhymes that seed pure wisdom. You brought back something old and musty. Your presence brings me joy, old Dusty. Mayor, what the heck happened here? Trauma in the conscious mind. The nightmares have come unconfined. They've seized our lands without remorse. We hide in fear behind closed doors. The other characters in the story are the nightmares. Sir, you have Sir Stinks, has some great musical scenes and some fine moments. While the main protagonist has some headbangers overall and some pretty great moments. The worst of the trio comes in the form of the French spider, but again, she was fine in her own right. One noticeable issue, and to start the transition into the nitpick section as a whole, came in the Nightmare's voice quality. It seemed relatively worse than Dusty's Piper, even Mayor Relic. Not when it came to the musical moments, however, only when they talked. <laughs> you lost it, friend. What? Leave my scrapbook alone. Another nitpick comes in a few visual bugs, such as Piper glitching through boxes, and then some odd clipping issues. Really, it felt like you should have been able to also fall off the platforms if you made a mistake, but you couldn't. Instead, you were stuck on the platform. If the player was able to fall off the platform, sure there may have been some frustrating moments, but it would have also added to the difficulty, especially near the end of the game. And thus this brings me to the end. Figment is a really cute story. I enjoyed my time playing it, and it's a game that I could probably play about two times and get completely done with it.
It's a whole experience and it tells a story with a good message. It's a story that anyone can relate to because we all go through our own struggles in life and you can overcome it. I would have to say, if you're going to play any game and you got a few hours, give Figment a try, especially with Figment 2 coming around the corner. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, do subscribe, and leave a comment down below. If not, that's fine too. Have yourself a good day, and thank you so much. Through your own struggles in life, and you can overcome it. I would have to say, if you're going to play any game and you got a few hours, give Figment a try, especially with Figment 2 coming around the corner. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, do subscribe, and leave a comment down below. If not, that's fine too. Have yourself a good day, and thank you so much.